Today on this 26th, 22nd Sunday after Pentecost, we are reminded of the gospel from St. Luke. At the death of a rich man who knows a man who suffered, whose name was Lazarus. Lazarus. It is a different Lazarus than we know that is raised from the dead. And this gospel reading is vitally important for all of us here and in every place and in every age in the history of the church that God so decides to give us. What happens here? This man is not condemned because he has money. He is condemned because he did not understand a vital part of what it means to be a Christian, and that is repentance. To take on the sufferings of this life and tie it to the crucifying sufferings of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. We live in a world that teaches power and money and strength alone. And there is no doubt that God calls certain people to certain of those things. But when any of them, when anything in general, becomes our idol here on earth, we are no better than the Israelites who came out of Egypt and decided that they were tired of wandering around in the desert, rather than having faith in what God had told Moses, and had faith in him himself, decided that they were going to put together a golden calf. Because some other pagan idol, some other evil deity, was to be trusted more. In part because it's what they could see. Money buys things. We make money when we work. And they say, aha, this is the most important thing or the power of our tribe, or the power of our people, <clears throat> our nations, through the ages, we have tied our identity, our patriotism, to those things that we can defeat, that we come together and we defeat them over there. And there is no question that in the history of the faith, there are certain people and groups that had to be defeated because their sole purpose, whatever else they said it was, was to destroy the faith destroy Christ, to destroy orthodoxy. And we live and work together with people from all places at all times who have been a part of that struggle. Most recently, all over Eastern Europe, for 20, 30 years, we always commemorate on these various Sundays who it was that was under the thumb, under the oppression of another government. And sometimes we have to say that our own government can be, right? And Christ says, do what you have to do, which is required of you by law, render under Caesar. But don't you dare forget what it means to render under God. He teaches us every day to pray, to repent, to partake of his body and blood. There are people in every age and every generation that eschew the sacraments. They're unnecessary. The church is unnecessary. But this is the institution that Christ gave us. This institution was born by the apostles. This Orthodox Church and our sacraments were born of Jesus Christ. Christ was very clear to the apostles, do this, do that, do these things. And he didn't mince words. <clears throat> Kind, loving, generous, serving Christ who walked upon this earth in our flesh. Don't be fooled. He knew what it was like to live in the flesh. And everything that comes with that, and I mean everything. And he said, still, I save you, body, soul, and spirit. I come to show you a path. I come to light that path. And in the end... Our nationalities mean nothing. The armies we follow mean nothing. In the end, our own personalities that we follow. Because truth be known, the greatest golden calf in each of our lives are ourselves. We tell God what we're going to do, don't we? Right? We play that game. Thy will be done, O oh Lord. Hey, but if you could do that, it'd be great. And he says, put your life in my hands. That is what Lazarus of the gospel did. Made fun of, pushed aside, 
set aside, right? Who does that remind you of? This is what happens with John the Baptist. This is what happens with many of the apostles. This is what happens with saints for 2,000 years. And today we commemorate a Saint John of Chicago who came to the United States to serve in the early part of the 20th century, an Orthodox block, obviously, up in Chicago. And he went back to Mother Russia and was killed in the Revolution. And how many stories do we have that St. Sebastian, whom we commemorate here in the United States on the West Coast, went back to the old country. He said, I've got to serve there. God's calling me there. St. Medadia, in our own diocese, was brought to the United States because he was under threat when the Bolsheviks took over in Russia. And they had to send him here to get out of the way. But then when they named him, the Russians named him Bishop of the Serbians, he said, no, that's not enough. I have to go back and talk to the Synod in Belgrade. And he went back under threat constantly. And it's interesting because in our country, in America, for very long we've had this kind of comfortable Christianity. And I think that's going away. We have to be attentive. We have to be learned. We have to be men and women of faith and reason, willing to defend the churches of God. What did Christ say? The gates of hell will prevail against the church. He doesn't mean your parish or my parish, right? He means the church in corporate. And over 2,000 years, all of these people that have tried to destroy it couldn't. But the evil one tries to destroy individual lives. That's why we partake, partake of sacraments. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, you hear me preach constantly about coming to confession. Yes, talk to Jesus all you want. But the mind has an incredible capacity to lie to itself. And the priest is here specifically to walk you into the divine presence. Whether it's the body and blood of Christ, whether it's in confession. We had, you know, I've had two baptisms this week, right? One this morning, one on Wednesday. Beautiful couple, couple came down from New York, right? And they're here to say, I'm offering this child. What did Joachim and Anna do that offered Mary up to God? And they got out of the way. And there she was young woman who prayed day and night, who would become the mother of God. Right? And that's a tall bar. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to pretend to be that. We can be us fully and completely. The way our Lord meant us to do, just like Lazarus did. And we will listen to that story and bring us with us to those doors. I love you all dearly. And I bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Before we say our final goodbyes, we are going to celebrate some Slava prayers for dear parishioners of ours.